Welcome to day 349 of our GISO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here, my twin brother, Brian. Remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in Cloud Feed. So yesterday, Open Prosper, run by Salil Sethi, they launched a whole new feature on their website, DISO at a glance. And it's really cool. You can get a lot of great information about DISO and find out pretty much anything you want to know about the blockchain. And a few of the things that I found interesting and in what you will see on the DISO at a glance page on Open Prosper is it shows a circulating su supply of DISO, which is approximately 10.6 million or so. Uh, it shows creator earnings, overall creator earnings, which is $16 million. The total wallets on DSO, which are 1.5 million wallets. The average trans transaction fees, which is about 16 hundredths of a penny per transaction, which is really, really good. Uh, it also shows the current DSO price. Uh, it was down to $28.56 this morning when I checked which is pretty, I think that's probably an all-time low, right, Brian? I believe it is. And it also shows a total blocks mined, which is at about 110,970. They also show a bunch of really cool charts. Uh, you can kind of visualize things better by looking at these charts. They show charts on the creator coin volume, US dollar changing wallets, uh, what else? They On the DSO blockchain transactions and also on wallets and creators on DSO. So you can get so much great information. So Lil Sethi, he's doing an awesome job with Open Prosper. Natter posted about it. So did Alex Valetis. It's, it's just a really, really cool and informative page. Yeah, and if you love stats, Open Prosper is a place to be. Uh, so Lil is great with numbers uh, and he's great at kind of aggregating these numbers in a way that kind of makes sense for the average user. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out and definitely this. This, these recaps are at the glance, DSO at a glance. That's, that's definitely very informative. And it's a great kind of place to send new users who kind of understand crypto, but they don't understand the DSO blockchain because it has a lot of information that they will understand, I think. Yes. Yeah, so yesterday, the Dow Dow Twitter spaces took place. And I know there are a lot of people in that room. I couldn't make it, I can only make the tail end of it. You were there, right, Brian? Yeah. I, it lasted about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, maybe. There was a pretty steady number of people. I, I think the high I saw was over 160, but throughout an hour, I, I think 150 people were there. So, I mean, 150 people at any one time throughout an hour. So it was very, very, uh, I think, successful in bringing in some new people. Um, there wasn't a whole lot talked about that really, I think, added to what we already knew. Uh, if, if you read the white paper, if you read the DSO blog post, I don't think there's a ton of additional information. I, I'd say this was more for people outside of DSO or for those who haven't been following what Dow Dow is uh, like we have, which we were obsessed with DSO. So maybe we know a lot more than the average user. But there were a couple things that I think Natter pointed out um, that we might not have known. Um, I was able to ask a question. I asked about any way they can kind of, kind of make a trustless way to allocate the funds. So like say a DAO generates $50 million and then they were gonna use that $50 million to say, say buy a Super Bowl ad. Some of it was gonna be used to buy a Super Bowl ad uh, on NBC for next year's Super Bowl. Like, is there a way to trustlessly um, allocate that money to say USDT and then to NBC or something like that. And Natter, Natter gave a few interesting uh, thoughts on that. He said, there's no way to really do it trustlessly. Like there's no, right now there's no smart contract that can automate the process of voting. And then those votes delineating where that money goes, no matter what. And, and he kind of said that he's not sure if that's really a, something that we want because what if there is the mistake? What if there is an error? What if, what if the managers decide maybe this was ho a horrible idea? Um, some centralization might be okay. But he did point out that multi-sig wallets are coming and what a multi-sig wallet will be able to do is 
allow for the sign off by multiple people for that money to be transferred. So it's not just one person. So say, say there's a, a DAO that comes up and maybe the person running the DAO isn't exactly well known within the community. Maybe they don't really have a, a great background uh, online. Like you can't really research them much. And people are like, yeah, $50 million. We're going to just trust this random person to allocate it. What if they were able to assign a multi-sig wallet to the funds or the funds to a multi-sig wallet and maybe bring on board, say, Fast Freddy and Tyne and some of the more trusted people on DSO as multi-sig signers? They would need all, all those signatures in order to allocate funds to any given crypto wallet. So that's definitely an added layer of trust. I think you might actually see a lot of people becoming kind of like multi-sig signers people that are trusted on DSO because that adds that layer of protection so so but so if it say they all agree to move it to a certain crypto wallet like a usdt crypto wallet how does that money get to say nbc wouldn't one yeah, person i, I mean that, that's a whole that other issue wallet? um it's a whole other issue. And, and I, I think that's things that need to be addressed. I think there's some technical ways around it that are going to probably well, well, come to fruition. I mean, I, I guess you could, if NBC had a crypto wallet, that could be the wallet that it's transferred to. But I guess right. like right now, most television companies or a lot of other companies aren't, you know, working on the, in the crypto space quite yet. But I, I think, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you had to transfer it to a bank account, there's nothing that's going to be able to ensure that the person that transfers the money or the money that's transferred to that bank account is used in the way that it's said it will be used. So I, I think there still are some issues, but overall, I, I think that it's it's a solid plan. A uh, Natter also touched on fees. So as you know, uh, a one percent fee is charged for anybody listing on on Dow Dow, and I believe there's going to be an additional fee for trade. So if there's going to be an open order book uh, on chain where users can buy and sell different different DAO coins. And I, I believe there's going to be a fee that's going to be associated with that. Now, Natter pointed out that the fee on trading will actually be charged on the app layer and not the blockchain layer. So it's not going to be built into, the fee's not going to be built into the blockchain. But if you're building on the blockchain, a, a maybe a trading platform for DAO coins on DSO, you can set whatever fee you want on the app layer. So you you yourself can set a fee, just like Dow Dow is setting a fee of one percent for for all all transactions, uh, at least initially. So I think that's another important kind of piece of information. Yeah, definitely. Uh, also, aside from the Twitter Spaces, which I think was great. Um, like I said, there was a lot of rehashed information, but it was great to see a lot of people, new people coming in and learning about Dow Dow. And I, I think that the, the ability to just relax and listen to what they're saying goes a lot further than having to read white papers and whatnot. So I think a lot of people on DSO who might not have had the time or the drive to read the white paper probably learned a lot as well. Um, another gold NFT was sold yesterday. So another $75,000 or so was- Do you know who that was that sold to? What's that? Do you know I don't remember the thing? name. It was like a, an anonymous name. Um, but the total number of Discord members jumped almost 3,000 yesterday from 2,000 to 5,000, which I, I don't really believe is accurate. <laughs> I'm thinking that there's probably some bot activity involved there. Um, but we don't know. The activity has picked up on the on the Discord. I know there's a lot of posts. There's also been a lot of silver and bronze NFT sales in the last like six hours, much less the 20, last 24 hours. So it, it's hard to say if there's bots involved. Um, I'm guessing there is because it more than doubled in, 20, in a 24 hour period. But uh, things seem to be going well for Dow Dow in the early going at least. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't, I think it's kind of weird that that many members signed up like 3,000 in less than 24 hours. Seems a little odd, but there have been a ton of NFT sales. So who knows? Maybe they're marketing it somewhere and all these people are coming on. I, I don't want to yeah. like, you know, say it's just bots because we don't know that. Uh, as for the gold ticket, I just looked it up. It's sold to a user called, if you know, you know, uh, they if bought you know, you know. for 2,500 DSO, they bought a gold ticket. I mean, DSO is pretty low right now. It's down to, uh, let me see here, down to $28.52. So, you know, you can get that gold ticket cheaper than 
you could previously, or you get a silver or bronze ticket cheaper than you could previously if you put US dollars in and buy it right now. Anyhow, Mubs yesterday made a suggestion about a DAO. Uh, he suggested the creation of the MVP DAO. And what he said is it would be a small group that funds the development of software MVPs, which are mobile and web apps. And the DAO would govern what to build as well as what when to sell and share and then share in the profit. So it's a really cool idea. There are a lot of people who said, yeah, this sounds awesome. We're, we're going to, you know, I'll definitely help out in that. I'll definitely be part of it. I'll definitely invest in that. One concern that Darian Parrish brought up was uh, that he said it was of concern to him was the legal ramifications of being part of an unregistered investment vehicle. And I think that's a concern that, you know, needs to be addressed. I, I know Natter talks about it and he says, you know, you have to be the first one to actually test these boundaries and then kind of ask for forgiveness after the fact. But when you get to legalities, you know, they scare, for me, it scares me. Like, I don't want to, you know, have the authorities after me for doing something that was illegal. So I'm very cautious. Other people may not be. Um, I'm definitely not in a position to give anybody legal advice on which they should or should not do. But I, I mean, I would probably consult a lawyer if you're really interested in taking on a project like this and get their feedback, maybe get, you know, a, a memo written by the lawyer that kind of backs up their stance that can kind of act to protect you to some extent. Yeah. And there's a couple of things there. Lawyers cost a lot of money. I know like a lot of the lawyers who are like specializing in DAOs right now are incredibly busy and incredibly expensive. They usually ask for a retainer of like $10,000 before you even start really That's having- That's what the DAOs for though, stuff. to raise money to pay for that. Those yeah, fees. right. Well, and, 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 and I, th I think there are other jurisdictions or certain countries that it might make more sense to do it. But I think the United States, it, it's tough. Um, it's tough because we don't really have regulations. We don't really have the SEC weighing in on DAOs quite yet. Um, we need more information and always remember that just because the SEC hasn't weighed in right now, if you do create a DAO and the SEC decides to say, hey, this is illegal, you're not off the hook. They can go back. And it, I, I just want to call to people, be careful, but be innovative. Think, think of ways you can use this stuff, but make sure you're doing it in a way that protects yourself and protects others. Yeah, for sure. So what were the top hashtags on DSO yesterday? Uh, number one, DSO. Number two, NFT. Number three, DAO DAO. DAO DAO, that's, that's not surprising. Uh, number four, crypto. And number five, Ukraine is still up there. Yeah, so... Some new ones in there today, especially down my Ukraine think. flag here. Hold on. There we go. And Open Prosper, what were the top accounts and what, how much was earned yesterday? A total of $117,361 was earned yesterday. Surprisingly, like really surprisingly, 3,293 creators earned at least some DSO. Now, this kind of goes along with the surge of users to the DAO DAO Discord server. But again, I kind of feel it could be bot activity. They did earn DSO though. So that has me wondering. So maybe I, I don't maybe know. Maybe Salil with all his stats and graphs maybe figure this out and let us know. Yeah, or maybe somebody else can just let us know why. The, the, the last few days we've been seeing 900 to 1,000 to maybe 1,100 uh, creators earning DSO. But in the last 24 hours, at least according to Open Prosper, they're almost 3,300 creators, which is almost, which is about 300% increase. So any information on that would be, be lovely. Uh, 13 creators earned about one D says it was slightly above the average over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Dow Dow, of course, earned the most, which was $113,592. Um, that's out of 117361 So all but about 30 eight hundred dollars yeah earned. so so if you look at that about thirty eight hundred dollars was earned outside of the dow dow that's still account. decent that's about a dollar per account which yeah makes me wonder like is somebody going around paying accounts at one dollar is somebody i don't know it, it, i'm very curious to know well I, there were some interesting earners this week uh because there were some some decent sized coin buys as well as one 
on, on our own creator coin. Uh, but Dow Dow was number one. Uh, number two was 80 wallet. Uh, number three was Shade Flowers wallet. Uh, number four was yours truly, Krasenstein. Uh, and that was no, yours truly. Yours truly. $3,000 coin buy that we got. So we earned about 10%, 9.9% of that from founder reward. Uh, next was Rhubarb, Clout Punk, Open Prosper, Mempools, Tyne, and Izzy. Yeah, congratulations to everybody who earned yesterday on DSO. All 3,293 of them, whether they're bots or humans, I don't know. As for community events today at 1 p.m. Eastern time is the Entra Community Hangout with Sean and Mariam. Uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is the DSO Happy House sponsored by Beer Buds with Brian Drever and Blockchain Padawan. And then that, that's on Clubhouse. And then at 10 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv forward slash streamcloud is streamcloud with Brock Pearson and Liftcloud. So definitely check those out. 1 p.m., 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern time today are the community events. And I think that's all we have for today. Everybody have a great day and we will talk to you tomorrow.